Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Finally got to finish this series. I enjoyed it, so I'll get that off to, uh, off my chest right off the bat. I did have some issues with it, but in general, I'm really enjoying the uh, Marvel, I don't know what you would call it, the TV universe. And I think one of the things I started realizing as I watched this was it feels like the MCU. And to an extent, so did Wanda. WandaVision. And I think that's really a big part of the fight for someone to enjoy this. If you're a fan of the MCU, I think you're going to enjoy the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think it... Maybe it's even a weird bias that it actually... Well, you know... Forget about talking about, oh, I like it, it's good, is it bad, is it objectively good or bad? I think you could almost wash that with these things. It's it's a weird feeling, and now I'm thinking about Loki, which I wasn't too interested in, and I'm starting to get excited about what that could be. So, like I said, I enjoyed the movie, uh, the, the TV show. It's six episodes, and it has um, one director, which I noticed, Carrie Skoglund. Ogland. and i think that helps in these things sometimes when you're watching uh you know especially 22 episode seasons you get different directors this had a um unified feel that i could i recognized uh midway through to and towards the end very fun it's got some cool themes in it the characters don't meet up right away in the beginning which was interesting and the stories play out I kind of like some of the offbeat things in here. And when I mean offbeat, I don't mean just offbeat like comedy. I mean offbeat timing and rhythm. There were parts of the show that I actually got caught in a lull and in a good way where I was surprised that something else wasn't happening, like my brain was telling me, but I was enjoying the moment that it was in. And I'm wondering if it's an editing technique, if it's something someone looks at so much footage and says, oh, I'm going to cut it this way i like these beats and it kind of works uh, i was really uh impressed uh you know looking back at it and thinking about these stupid podcasts i do in my little outlines that there were parts in here and i'm going my brain was ready to go okay where are we going and who are we gonna whose ass we're gonna kick and it it i guess subverted my expectations is that uh the new thing since uh the last jedi anyway there's a lot to like in the show, and some of my little nitpicks are the villains. I didn't buy the villain, and I think that's an issue with this show. However, it takes the opportunity to use a villain from a movie and turn a new hero, well, the new Captain America, into a fucking psychopath, and it, and it worked. It really elevated the show or i guess it kind of glossed over the lack of a true threat of a villain in that sense uh i uh, don't give too many plots and uh you know spoilers in that sense but this will be a little bit of a spoiler so be warned there's someone who found the super serum super soldier serum and well they rediscovered it and there's a limited amount of people out there that have it and they're doing a revolution. They want to get back to the blip, the five-year span, which I didn't buy that either. So I think that's where the uh, initial surface thoughts of this is. I enjoyed it. I found myself liking it a lot, feeling like I was in the MCU. And although the themes and some of the things, uh, something they wouldn't try in the movies like WandaVision, it still is there as under as the foundation is there and i i think you can get away with making some halfway decent shows that aren't really um solid or across the board and it, it, you know every you check every box and it just doesn't uh matter so much it's such a beloved universe they did enough good stuff that the subpar stuff just you know it lingers there but it doesn't tarnish everything it doesn't you know make you uh regret things or 
wish things were done differently like some other movie franchises that have tried it, which I've done podcasts on. You got the actors that come back, which is great. Sebastian Stan, Anthony Mackie, uh, just uh, some really good performances. Everybody works well together. Another surprising thing. Some of the ancillary characters really stand out here and there. They get this uh, replacement, Captain America, and you're going for the ride with his sidekick. And one of my favorite lines of the whole show, I don't know why it got me, but um, uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, agree to at least get a ride from these guys. And it, the new Captain America and his sidekick, I think his battle star, is... Trying to, you know, get them to work together. And they're like, no. And Bucky Hicks, the sidekick, like, I think he's like, what's your name? And he has a name thing on him, like Hopkins or whatever. And he goes, what do you go by? Or something to that effect. And the guy goes, Battlestar. And uh, Winter Soldier just goes, all right, stop the car. <laughs> he just gets out. He starts walking. It's just, I don't know. It really hit me. And uh, I really had to enjoy the whole thing. And I just try to look critically at some things and go, I didn't buy the whole movement of the villains. And like I said, I didn't mind so much. You had some great uh, interactions with Zemo, villain from uh, the the um, Civil War movie. And like I said, you introduced this Captain America who's a little unstable. And the whole super soldier serum thing, I, I maybe I would have bought it. If it was presented a different way, I just, I don't know. I didn't get the connections they were trying to make and trying to, you know, do things as, uh, uh, you know, there's a, it feels a little forced in some areas, but there is a little twist here and there and then other characters from the movies appear and it's kind of not really super twisty where it's like, you pull a rug out out from under you, but it's enough that it gives you a little smile. And you go, okay, let's see where they go with that. Cause I, okay. So I was a little surprised they didn't bring in sword, which was introduced in WandaVision, the all replacement sort of a field. I would guess in that sense, if they're going with shield doesn't exist no more in the, in the movie universe, I'm not sure. Agents of shield ended and there's a little bit of uh rumors here and there. I did like that they got Elaine from Seinfeld, Julia Louise Dreyfus on. She was playing, uh, I think I know the character from the comics, but I'd have to do a quick check. Some kind of Contessa or something like that. Uh, what do they call her? I think the, yeah, Contessa. And she kind of has an influence at the end because the new Captain America kind of you know has to make it. It's just like a, a little bit of a plot. Um shift and she's in there here and there but she's not really prominent but like i said i really liked the way the action was filmed the special effects there was one part one part i wrote down um i don't mind him in a jacket and i just kept once in a while going you know he's not in a uniform i'm talking about the falcon right now and he's doing things and he's with a jacket but for the winter soldier it doesn't matter too much because Bucky could, um, you know, a somewhat super soldier himself with a bionic arm, Wakandan arm, you know, he can really do a lot. And I was surprised at uh, Falcon running around in just civilian clothes here and there. And I was, like, really interested because the subject matter was good, the chemistry was good, it was believable. I think there was, um, see, I'm not a big fan of Iron Man 3. But I think there was something I liked about the fact that he had no armor and he had to do things. It's just like, okay, I love his outfit. He's uh, got the wings and it works and you want to see more of it in a sense. Well, you don't have to worry about that. Like I said, with the soldier, but I was pleasantly surprised. It really worked on a lot of levels. I didn't need to keep seeing um, super, you know, advanced flight moves with his, uh, you know, suit but i did really get surprised at how much i like the upgraded outfit because i'm not giving too much away there's um uh, a moment where he gets a new costume and i was surprised it looked really well uh, i was wondering if they were going to pull it off because it's 
it looks kind of weird when uh, you know I so much follow the comic books in a sense. And Marvel Studios, whoever's behind a lot of these things, I think they're really doing well. And and as long as you're not making a shitty product, I think you're gonna be able to get by with these and be successful. You make a decent show, yeah, it's got flaws, sure. And even the, I see that with like the Mandalorian. It's almost like, you know what, I'm such so mad at what they fucking did in the movies, Last Jedi, Last Skywalker, whatever the fuck it is, that the Mandalorian is like a breath of fresh air, but it's fucking riddled with problems and ridiculousness, if you want to be honest about it or objective. And I think you're going to see the same with these shows. You know, WandaVision's weird and... It's a big, take a big chance, I think, when you do things like that, and good for them. Uh, the buddy cop uh, atmosphere you get is, like I said, deep themes that are um, brought up and addressed, and even though know, they kind of change the tempo of the show, and it's almost, it feels like almost an episode of just, I got to deal with life, and it was kind of refreshing in that way. You would call it, you know, subverting expectations. I recommend the show. I would give it a shot. I think it fits in nicely, although I would like a little bit more ties. Like I said, I think you, if you're not going to keep shields in there, I'd like to have a presence, even if it was sword. And I'm not sure um, if there were things I missed with certain people who had uh, ties to other characters. Like I said, uh, Julia, Julia Lee's wife is, plays um, a Contessa. And looking at it um, from the long view, can these things connect to the movies? And I think you can. I think... Like, I wouldn't be surprised that a Wanda movie is not successful or a Winter Soldier movie is not successful. I think they could work and could these things be the stepping stones? If you do, Like I said, you do a decent show, you get the feel, you keep the things that people love about the MCU, and I think you're going to have success. I think that's why these are working. And I don't like to do super comparisons, but I'm so done with... CW type stuff, and I was done with it a long time ago. Everything gets forced to watch, like to get to catch up on the Flash. Arrow ended. It's just so much in that formula that um doesn't I don't agree with, and I'm totally uh, you know understanding of people who love the show is fine, and I just you know starting with the Netflix uh, Daredevil. Jessica Jones, which are amazing shows, and then the subpar, or the, I enjoy them, but you can see the flaws in the Iron Fist and Luke Cage, which I really love, by the way, Luke Cage. But then again, I'm somebody who likes Green Lantern, but you know, I know it's a shitty movie. All in all, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, watch it, six episodes, they go by quick, and even those lull, those tempos, feel earned, they feel natural, in the way that it could be, uh, you know, subverting my expectations, but it's, it's done well. You got chemistry, good photography, you know, cinematography. I'm really impressed with what they do when they do it. For the most part, I can't really, nothing really stands out. And like I said, you got the main characters you love to interact. And then when you got a good cast of characters that fill in, and they're, they're pretty decent. Although, like I said, Elaine plays a little bit of overboard on some of the things she does. But I love the show. I think it's going to be something I look back on and would watch again. My nitpicks are the villains, but it's a kind of okay in a sense for me. And you know what? That's hypocritical, fine. But the role of Nemo and the new Captain America's arc kind of makes up for it. And it kind of feels that, you know, the negative of that part of this. So give it a shot. I think you enjoy it for the most part. And that's my recommendation. I hope everybody's doing well. There's things changing here in New York, hopefully. I think uh, the governor said we're going to go up to full capacity in July, by July 1st. So we'll see how that goes. So hope everybody's doing healthy. Vaccines are coming more numerous. Uh, I would recommend young or old to get it. I mean, the data shows that it's going to be so, somewhat successful to at least stem things. And there are... Uh, Pretty good reasons why you should, for the most part. Though I think this uh, gives me more excitement, and I do, about Loki, because I think that's coming next. And 
I wasn't even sure about this, to be honest. Um, I don't know if I'm being pessimistic about it, but I was pleasantly surprised with WandaVision. It was a little caught off guard by the first three episodes. And looking at this, I really enjoyed it from the beginning. Like I said, some of the tempo is off here and there, but I think it's done well, and maybe you can call it artistic. Uh, um, you know, just you did the right moves, and you just didn't overdo it too much. But I look forward to Loki. I don't know what's next in this universe, but I think in somewhat of a, you know, things that are going on, I think there's a Shang-Chi is being pushed, like maybe a teaser came out. And I'm wondering about that too. Is it going to be a TV? Because now we have to wonder what's going to be made for movies. Is also just being made for TV or streaming. So although you might have Shang-Chi and it might be a two hour, two and a half hour movie, it, it could be just release at the same time on streaming services. So that trend might keep up for a while since a lot of the, uh, you know, theaters and such have been hit so hard by this fucking pandemic nonsense. And I was wrapping this up, but hope everybody's healthy. Be safe out there. I'll talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.